Good day, everyone. How are you doing? My name is Jermaine Stanley. We are here today to talk about bias in the workplace. This is the name of our workshop, but specifically, we're going to be covering unconscious bias. Before we do that, I'd like to get to know who I'm talking to. I mean, we're, we're coming from different parts of the world, different parts of the country. So why don't you take a moment to share with us your name, uh, the company or department that you're a part of, and you know what actually brought you to this training? Why do you think you uh, need to be here? What motivated you? And we have folks who are online uh, through our Zoom chat, you can chime in. And those who are here uh, in person, uh, definitely take the time to introduce yourselves. Okay, who wants to start? All right, we got someone here. Uh, John, he's calling from the D.C. area. Hey, I, I live in D.C. I'm in this area as well. Man, it's been hot lately, hasn't it? Um, but, you know, let us know where you're from, who you are. Okay, great. You work You work for a federal agency here locally. A lot of us do, right? Oh, we also have someone out here uh, who are, who's in the Phoenix area. And uh, they are in cybersecurity. And they are a leader a new leader, a new manager, actually. So uh, they were asked to uh, take this training. They also felt that they, they should take this training considering what's been happening in the world. Okay, thank you for sharing there, Sue. Oh, then we have Malcolm up in the Detroit, Michigan area. Now that's my hometown. I, I grew up there, talk about uh, missing home sometimes. But uh, tell us, John or Malcolm, why are you here? Okay, great. So Malcolm is saying, he's typing in the chat here that, um, you know, like the previous person from Phoenix, uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a time of year, a time in our history. The last couple of years have uh, been uh, challenging for, for all of us and bias seems to be coming into, the, into focus again. So he's really interested in learning more about uncovering this. All right, and we have some folks from the California area uh, that are chiming in on chat here as well. And uh, they are, they consider themselves allies. They are not black, they're not Latino. Uh, they, 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 they say they are white men, his name is Bob. And uh, he really wants to learn more about uh, bias in the workplace and, and how, how he can do better with this and identifying these types of things. And, and, and Bob, thanks for bringing that up because we are going to get to those objectives here real, real soon. And then uh, we have someone up in Seattle. We've got Ruben out that way. Thank you for chiming in. And Ruben said he, he works in technology as well. And he's someone that's been uh, in this field. He's a people leader and he's interested in uh, sh sharpening his skills around unconscious bias. Now, we also have some folks here in the room. Um, oh, a woman here in the front uh, said her name is Janet, and she uh, is saying that um, she is also a people leader, and she's definitely interested in strengthening her skills and, and knowledge around unconscious bias. Thank you all for introducing yourselves. This is gonna be an interactive type of situation type of meeting uh, that we're gonna have here. Well, rather than a meeting, let's call this a discussion. I believe the discussion is where we get more interaction, right? I don't wanna sit here and just dictate to you all the things that are out there. I really wanna hear from you. I wanna hear uh, what your thoughts are. Um, I'll introduce myself and then we'll get into some of the housekeeping items. Uh, my name is Jermaine Stanley. I'm the founder and CEO of Stanley Consulting Group. Uh, I'm a master connector, um, and that is something. So ask me later, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, diversity, equity, inclusion champion. I really take pride in this. Uh, it's a passion of mine, not just because I'm a black Latino or Afro Latino. It's, it's something that's been eating at me for a good bit of my career. Uh, so yes, I like to champion uh, the, the efforts around this space that we call diversity, equity, inclusion, or DEI. I'm a speaker. Uh, 
professional speaker. I get out there and I talk about this subject. I talk about my experiences as a technology leader uh, working in this space, uh, whether it's dot com, whether it's cybersecurity, whether it's IT risk. I've done it all. Uh, I am a tech nonprofit board member two times over. As a matter of fact, I'm president of a very large uh, non tech nonprofit here in the greater Washington, D.C. area. As I mentioned, I have a pretty lively uh, amount of experience. Uh, I have more than 25 years of experience in technology, sales, marketing, covering different industries like fi financial industry, uh, manufacturing, energy, um, and, and federal government. Think about those. That's a, that's a vertical as well, right? And uh, as I said at the beginning here, a moment ago that, yes, I did work in the dot-com space. I was probably one of the few people of color working back then in the mid-90s uh, in the dot-com space. And yes, I sold Yellow Page advertising. And for those who may not know, uh, for those boomers and Gen Xers, uh, you'll get this. But for those who don't, those phone books, those big things that we used to use to look up information. Right now, today, everything is done on our phones or our computers or our tablets. Uh, Google, Yahoo, search engines, they're all out there for us. So uh, thank you all again for introducing yourselves. And, and again, feel free to ask questions. Uh, we will be here for a few hours. So I want to make sure that you understand that uh, for those who are online, if you need to take a break, just put a little note in the chat, say, hey, I'll be right back or BRB. Uh, those who are in the room, uh, no need to raise your hand, just step out of uh, the bathrooms and water and, and uh, we have refreshments outside to the right um, and to the left, you can go to the men and women's room uh, if you need to take a break. And I will be mindful of the time uh, to make sure that we have decent uh, periods of breaks, you know, maybe every, you know, 35, 40 minutes we'll take a break. Uh, like I said, we'll be here a couple of hours. We'll take about a 10 minute, maybe 15 minute break for you to stretch and to, you know, check your emails or take phone calls, things of that nature. So again, thank you and welcome uh, to biases in the workplace. So our learning objectives today is, you know, this is not rocket science. Uh, this is all to help you understand um, what unconscious bias is or what bias is, right? And our, our three main objectives here are to provide a definition of unconscious bias and how to recognize it in the workplace. And, and uh, folks, a few of you mentioned earlier during the introductions that uh, you'd love to just be more knowledgeable about unconscious bias, how to recognize it. And we're going to talk about that. You know, you want to also how to not only recognize unconscious bias, but how to deal with it in the workplace. Right. So when you have these different scenarios where you approach someone that you may feel uncomfortable about, someone who's different, you know, how do you handle those things? We want to try to give you some tips on how to do those things. And then how you can then take that a step further and actually interact, have a conversation uh, with uh, different people uh, from different areas, different diverse groups or underrepresented groups, whether they're Black, Latino, whether they're a woman, whether they're uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or queer, uh, you name it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to try to help you out here a little bit. Before I put the next slide up, um, I want to help you with a little bit of a framework here or foundation, foundational understanding is what I call these, of what unconscious bias is. And the question I want you to ask yourself is what does bias mean to you? Think about that for a moment. And I'm gonna throw the, the next slide up here. All right, so a bias. What is bias? From a definition standpoint, it's a prejudice in favor of or against one thing, person, or group compared with another, usually in a way considered to be unfair. Here's a great example there was evidence of bias against foreign applicants. So those who are in the recruiting space or the talent management space, you get where I'm going with this, right? And I'll just throw out there, there's a, an example of how AI, that's a whole other course, 
is being used to screen out resumes that seem to favor men. Okay, so biases often operates subconsciously by definition. And what I mean by subconsciously is we are all wired to have bias. Our brains are wired this way. This has been part of our evolution for eons since we first walked on this earth as human beings. It's what helped us survive all these years. If I give you an example, for instance, a busy, busy street, you're walking down a busy street, you come to an intersection. Now, our bias, our instincts will say, if I step onto this street and there's a lot of traffic, there's a good chance that I'm gonna get hit. Yes. Without that bias, we just go in. Now that's a safety mechanism, right? But again, it's just an example of how we have bias. Well, in this case, we have a bias towards not being hit by a car. Think about that for a moment. Now, I'd like to get right into it. We're gonna take a short quiz here. And it's not, it's, it's not to say you're, it's any answer is wrong or right. It's just 10 questions that will help you understand or bring some awareness to your own self about bias. This is something that you don't have to share with your colleagues. It's something to help you. Now, if you decide to do that on your own, that's up to you. But it's not necessarily something that you will need to do, but it will help you as you move through this particular training. The questions are designed to test your knowledge, awareness, and unconscious inherent bias. Remember I said at the top here, we are wired this way. So take a few moments, take about 10 minutes or so. Uh, you can work in groups if you want, or you can be individual about this. Again, you don't have to share your results. Take a few more moments. Uh, there are 10 questions here. We'll kind of discuss these. We'll try to go through some of them so that we are mindful of time. Answer time. So tell me, what did you learn? Was there anything here that surprised you? Right now, in your handbooks that uh, would get, were given to you, you can you can jot, you jot down your answers in the, in the in the book. Take your notes there as well. Um, if you got a ten out of ten, you're probably most aware of biases. That's pretty perfect. If you're somewhere between five, six, and ten, you have some awareness of bias, but need to. Uh, proactively take some steps uh, to improve on, upon those. And of course, if you're less than that, um, you're probably going to need a little bit more. Uh, the next slide here, I'm sorry, I put that up there prematurely. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how to recognize unconscious bias. Now, what I want you to do is take a moment to ask yourselves, do you typically go to the same person for lead projects or other assignments. Think about that for a second. Do I create opportunities for others to demonstrate their capabilities or potential? That's for my leaders in the room here. Whom do I include in important meetings and events? This is very important if you ask me because as an employee, I wanna feel included. And I wanna also feel that I have a voice and that I'm contributing to the success of our organization or our company. And then the last one is, how do I identify and choose candidates for promotion and secession? If you answer yes to any of these questions, then the chances are you're working with some element of, bi of, of bias. I'll go back to the first one, for instance. Do I typically go to the same people for lead projects or other assignments? You feel comfortable. That's probably why you do that. Think about that for a second. You're familiar with them. You feel safe. But sometimes we have to go beyond those boundaries to grow, 
to to understand, to expand our horizons, so to speak. And then according to Deloitte's 2019 State of Inclusion survey, 64% of workers surveyed felt that they had experienced bias in their workplaces during the last year. And of those, 61% felt that they had experienced bias in the workplace within the last month. Now, I don't know about you, but there's still a lot of work to do when it comes to bias. And yes, there's a lot of training out there that you can go through and things of that nature. There's a lot of research you can do on your else, uh, on your own rather. Um, but I, I encourage you to do so. Continue to grow on it. And then one more thing I want to say before we move on to the next session. Bias is everywhere you turn. Think about that. Bias is everywhere you turn. But most dangerous of biases are those that are not even recognized. Some could be very subtle. Some can be so subtle that you didn't notice. It, you, it may take you a week before you realize, hey, wait a minute, I just acknowledged that. Or I just acknowledged the fact that that happened, right? And it's up to us to acknowledge where those biases come in.